Welcome to Empowered to Grow, the podcast. I am your host, Hanan al Basha, the business doctor. Following our conversations with empowered women who woke up one day and consciously claimed, I am more than enough, I am worthy, I am empowered to grow. And along their empowering journey towards realizing their own potential and their quest for growth, they became a beacon of hope and guidance for others. May you also find your inner power to grow. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another special episode of Empower to Grow. My host today, or my guest today, but she's also a host in in her own way, Dr. Sanal Varnain is, well, she is the founder of Her Soul Business. She is also an author. We were just celebrating that. And she's a single mom. And guess what? She's an advocate for all three of them together. So Dr. Sana, we, we met, what, a year ago online? We haven't had yeah. the chance to meet in person yet, but I know that uh, since the first day, we established a very strong connection because we resonated on so many levels. And we were like, yeah, yeah, me too. And that's how I feel. And that's, what this- <laughs> and that's what I loved about this connection. I think some connections are just fate the universe just brings us together so exactly. thank you so much Senna for accepting my invite and thank you for being with us here today thank you so much uh, Dr. Hanan for you know for hosting me at your at this beautiful platform um, I just uh, I'm honored <laughs> I'm honored too <laughs> <laughs> We're, well, I also celebrated that we both have doctorate degrees and well, we don't meet a lot of people with doctorate degrees. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. someone else went through the pain and through the progress and through the journey and we ended up on the other side. I asked the first question as Empowered to Grow. When I sent you and said, I'd love to interview you on the podcast and you're on my group as well, Empowered to Grow on, on Facebook and yeah. everything. What, what does that mean to you? How does it resonate with you being empowered to grow? Well, I believe that um, every single day uh, is a day for us to grow. If we are really uh, aware that uh, this is the way we want to live our lives. Um, I believe that the first 20 to 30 years is all about experimentation, you know? True. You find out about life, you find out about how to connect to people, you have lots of errors in lives, lots of mistakes, we call them mistakes, but I believe that they're, they're all just uh, a learning process. Exactly. But once we, uh, I believe that we, we reach a, a point in our lives where we are really aware that we are growing. Uh, and all those mistakes that we thought that they were mistakes, are just learning experiences and that there are uh, growth opportunities. Yes. And all the regrets that we had when we were teenagers or when we were young, when we had like, uh, let's say we got into relationships, we got out of relationships. uh, We thought, or maybe the society thought that uh, um, maybe uh, brought us up and to think that these are mistakes. you reach that moment in life when you realize all those experiences were opportunities to growth. I think this is the, the time when you are reborn again. Cause, cause yes. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, like, it's like you're just looking at your past uh, in a completely different um, perspective. Yes. And, and, and your life changes. Yeah. I believe that that that's that's really a growth. Yes, and I, I love that. I love that you 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 chose that um, platform with that um, perspective, the growth and the empowered, because it is empowering to look at your life as a growth and a growing experience. That's true. And and my as you said, my perspective shifted when I started looking at all the the hardships and all the adversity and everything I overcame by switching my mind around from I felt like a victim, like this was happening to me. And I know I speak of Tony Robbins a lot because that's one of the fundamental things I learned from him. And it's like when we switch our, our life around from or our perspective or our worldview lens from life happens to us to life happens for us. I looked at everything differently and I saw that I did not go through it. I grew through it. 
And that was like, whoa, okay, mind blowing. <laughs> Let's change this around. I changed my own story because I saw it from, from new eyes. So you are empowered to grow and you are empowering others to grow. Would you share a little bit about your story with us, please? Well, there are lots of stories I can say. Um, every stage of my life, there was uh, one story to tell and uh, one story to, to just uh, share with the people who were there around me. Uh, I can say that the phases of my story uh, changed uh, from one stage to another. At the beginning, um, I've always wanted, loved learning um, from a young age. Mm -hmm. so, so learning was always my, my um, excitement. And at the same time, my uh, growth uh, focal point and uh, experiences uh, with life and with people. Yeah. So, so I believe that learning can be the word for me that made me survive and thrive throughout all the, um, the phases and the stages of my story. Uh, I believe that we don't have one story. Uh, I believe that we have different small stories that are uh, connected to each other yes and we choose and we choose to like uh, change the direction of mm -hmm. our big story uh, in every state mm -hmm. so so there is no one story yes. there are always several small pieces of your story mm -hmm. and it's up to you in each stage to change direction make it look different make it um, maybe simpler or more complicated um, as much as you grow and as much as you change along the way. Yes. So, so I really cannot say one thing. It, it, it might take long, longer than this to time. say my story, <laughs> but I can, um, and I cannot simplify it in few words. I can, I can just say that um, I love family. But at the same time, I love uh, learning, traveling, and friendships. Um, and maybe that's why when my, my story changed from being a mother, uh, and, then, and that's what I really wanted to have, uh, be having a big family, being a mother. And actually, my vision was completely different than what it turned out to be. So... <laughs> Sometimes when, when you want something, but then you find out that, oh my God, God really wanted something completely different, but you will not realize that until you go through lots of experiences and just look back. Yeah. So, so usually looking back, you realize that, oh, I wanted this, but the divine plan wanted something much better for me. Exactly. So from going from being a mother, um, I was a single mother. I, I am still a single mother for 20 years. <laughs> and, that's an achievement and, in itself. <laughs> uh, exactly. Exactly. That's that's just one whole book. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and then um, I started traveling uh, uh, all over the world for my work and for my business. Um, I never thought I would become an entrepreneur or a coach or a no. Well, one thing I knew, I will be an author one day because yeah. this was always my childhood dream. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I always read a lot. Uh, I wrote a lot. Uh, but, uh, of course, the divine uh, timing was uh, was what can I say, um, unexpected. <laughs> it happened when, when it, when it when was it's, meant when it's to happen. happen. When it was meant to happen. <laughs> so, so, so that moment when I, when I just held my book and I really, that, at that moment I had that pose 
between me and myself and I felt, oh my God. Uh, it's like it's like my whole story has been has been concluded at that moment when I when I just held that book. It's like holding your dream manifesting in that book. And yeah. it wasn't that book. I, actually, the whole story, which coming back to your question, the whole story that you lived that made you come into this point where you realize your dream manifesting, you know? Yes. So. And I yeah. think that is the point as well, where, as you said, because it's about manifestation of a lifelong dream, it also opens up your horizon to possibly a thousand new trajectories from where you stand right now. Yeah. Because it's like, yes. okay, so this happened. Wow. What can I do next? And, and it's like, it really, it fortifies your belief in yourself and your belief in I can work towards a, a huge dream of mine and I can work towards making it happen for me. Yeah, true, true. No, I love that. It's uh, for, I think for me in the past few years, the, the, the similarity maybe in the feeling was, was the doctorate degree because I had worked so long and so hard for it. And the moment I got the email of like, you know, I'm crying. I was like, seriously, it, it happened. Like it's done. <laughs> it's like, that's it. <laughs> no more crying over amendments. I have to do for my thesis. No more <laughs> late calls. I was like, oh, I can't do this. And I think that is such um, a pivotal moment in, in our lives where, where we believe in ourselves. I mean, we could always believe in ourselves, but, but there's a part where you believe and then there's the, you know, we talk about the voices in our heads. We talk about our, our, our subconscious conditioning. We talk about our upbringing. We talk about how we were shaped to believe that dream small. Come on, don't be outrageous mm -hmm. in your dreams. Mm -hmm. That is a part where it's just like, hang on a second this is possible. I can create this for me. And this is amazing. And I want to do more now. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, not forgetting that, that um, usually most of the time, uh, or not most of the time, I mean, along the way, you will always have those doubts, you know, um, you will always have those moments when you're like, um, I really don't know if this is going to happen or not, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and especially um, some people think, uh, especially that uh, we as coaches, they think that we do not go through that, that process. Yeah. And we th they think that it's, it's, um, it's just like um, a, a long journey of m motivated person who wakes yes. up happy and then, you know, goes, <laughs> goes, goes, so so motivated to wake up the next morning but it's it's not uh, the case yes you will always have those doubtful moments you'll always have those days that uh, you really don't know what's next yes. and it's okay yes uh and and that's what i really uh experienced uh from and I, actually i really appreciate from this this process especially uh, not only the process of creating this book, but the process of all the things, other things, as the um, doctorate degree or um, um, initiating my business or, or any other project along the way. Because um, we do have the vision. It's just we don't know most of the time what are, what is the next step. We might see yes. the what we are going to do tomorrow or the day after or maximum next month but still we do not know we do not re really um guarantee what's going to happen true true that's true so actually from from that perspective then let me ask you this from where you stand right now having manifested that lifelong dream what would you um what advice would you go back and impart on your 19 year old self? I mean, provided you have a 20 year old girl, but what would you tell yourself at the age of 19? 
trust divine life design. <laughs> trust that God has a better plan for you. Hmm. Even the best plan that you have about yourself for your life, God has a much better plan. So even if you deviate from that plan, that's fine. It's going somewhere much better. <laughs> Something's got, something bigger is going to serve you more. Exactly. That's exactly. Cool. I love that. Okay. Now the other end of the spectrum, if there was a time capsule, what would you like your 90 year old self to thank you for today? I think the same, the same thing, trusting uh, God's plan and trusting divine timing. Okay. Uh, the timing is so important, trusting divine timing and God's timing is so important because uh, we might know um, what we want. Um, but we might give up when uh, the deadline passes and it didn't happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And we have, and, and we have, and after that deadline passes, we have, we get lots and we have lots of doubts. Yes. So uh, trust, trust divine timing. I think that, that, that in itself is something that is so simple yet so difficult for us to, to do because that kind of makes us feel like, so when is it going to happen? How can I make it happen? How is it not in my hands? And, and you kind of feel that you're handing over again control. I think that freaks mm -hmm. us out a bit because exactly. you're working towards something and you're, you're on the path, but it's not happening. And that mm. is, is something that really just kind of, is, I think it also leads to confusion a bit. Is this the right place? You know, the confusion leads to self-doubt. The self-doubt leads you to, uh, the, 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 then you're kind of wavering off and you're going off the path. But it is that. It's, it's about letting go somehow and yet still doing it. Yeah, I think, I think it's meant to be this way. Yeah. Because, uh, because, because if if God uh, wanted us to to uh, to know those things, uh, I believe I believe because that's why God had the the, um, the timing between uh, our birth and death um, not known unknown to to all of us. Yes. I believe, first of all, to to make because because imagine if we do know, I think we wouldn't we wouldn't be doing uh, whatever we are doing right now. Yes, we wouldn't have the excitement to do stuff, mm -hmm. um, and we wouldn't have um, the urge and 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 the the fascination of really wanting. Uh, to know what's going to happen next it's it's like uh, it's uh, so so you mentioned a word which is uh, sometimes we we give up uh, I believe if we just change the perspective and instead we look at life as an experiment yes and and to tell you the truth once I got that enlightenment I believe it is it is an enlightenment yes <laughs> Once you look at life, instead of looking at it uh, from a fearful side, look at, look at it from, from an experimental perspective. Sure. It's like a kid who's like, you know, in the playground and it's like, oh, let me try this. Let me do this. Let me try that. Yes. So, so going back to our childhood, you know, attitude, yeah. uh, uh, playing, experimenting, makes makes life more more uh joyful that's true that's true and 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 that that has been also one of the biggest revelations and one of the things that i work with um when when as you said when i work with with my my friends and my clients it's go back to what gave you joy 
I think for me, I was doing a lot of things and I realized that when, when I took, we were talking before this, when I said I had to stop and I had to breathe and I had to sit with myself and see where I am now. And a big chunk of it was that I, I missed joy out of my life. I was working towards something and I stopped yeah. to say, where are my sources of joy? And that somehow it kind of fell in line and it felt aligned with my my service in, in the feelings of service and my feelings of empathy and my feelings of love. And all of these give me joy. And I, I had to go back and reconnect and ground myself again in those feelings, in those thoughts, in those actions and say, okay, now I can work again from this space. And um, as you said, it's, it's a matter of sometimes we just have to go back to that child in us and experiment and understand that yes, some things won't work out, but again, we're going back to what we started with. We are growing through it because we are learning, we are extracting the lessons out of it and kind of tweaking yeah. the next <laughs> the next action. Yes, yes, exactly. So, okay. So you're on a stage and to you are giving a speech to tens of thousands of women. And <laughs> it's about being empowered to grow. What would be that last message you leave them with? Trust your own answers. I like that. Um, all the questions that we are looking for answers for are not out there. They are all within. And that was, that was the purpose actually why I wrote my book because I and I specifically said trust your journey because I believe that um, we don't need to compare our own journey to someone else's journey uh, we do not have uh, the same answers for one question as the same answers as others it might be one question, but we all have different answers sure. because we have, we all have different journeys that we learn through different lessons. Yes. So trusting your own answers and knowing that the answer that comes from within is the, uh, the right answer for you. Yes. I, I love that. I love that. And, and that is so true on so many levels. Again, it is, I think, a big thing that holds us back is we are comparing ourselves and our stories and our journeys with others, understanding mm -hmm. that, I, and this is something I really advocate for now because I know that I'm changing my perspective on a daily basis, understanding that, yes, our journeys could have the same outlines, but the details are so different. Yeah. And, and you, we can't map out two identical journeys, even as, as sisters, even as people in the same household, when, when our details are so different, our personalities, our worldview lens, everything goes into it. Like, a, like you know, all the ingredients in a recipe. I mean, that's yeah. why we, we see it even on, on cooking shows, you know, the cooking competition shows where they give them a mystery <laughs> box and they all have the same ingredients. And it's amazing how they can come up with completely different iterations and, and adaptations of those ingredients, yeah. what's completed? Mm -hmm. It could be savory, it could be sweet, it could be a dessert, it could be an appetizer. <laughs> but but that's it, actually. That's that's our life. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. and you would never eat two spaghettis, and they would be the same. I mean, at the end of the day, it's tomato sauce and and, and pasta, <laughs> but <laughs> they would taste different. And and that is it. I I love that. Trust yes, trust your answers. Um, I know we, we can keep going on and on, but we have the uncharted discussions to, uh, I, I definitely want to delve deeper with you on a few uh, things. Um, thank you so much. This has been a breath of fresh air and I'm so happy we thank got to do so it. Much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Hanan. <laughs> so um, where can our viewers and listeners find you in virtual space and definitely where can they get the, your book? Uh, they can go to at her soul business mm -hmm. uh, on Instagram yes. and they can find uh, the links uh, on my profile. Perfect. Perfect. So Dr. Sanat Barneen, the, uh, the entrepreneur, the author, 
and the mom. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, as, as you know, um, her sole business, I mean, at the end of the day, isn't that what a lot of things are foundational to us? And yet we don't stop enough to look at it. It's connecting with our soul. It's about our alignment. Even when it comes to our businesses, that is the source for us and listening mm -hmm. to our voice. Yes, sometimes we, it could take a bit longer to hear our voice, but our voice is strong and it's confident and it's trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us today. And um, I wish you love, abundance and prosperity. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Empowered to Grow podcast. For further engagement with a tribe of empowered women, join my Facebook group, Empowered to Grow, or visit my website, www.hananelbasha.com. I'll catch you on the next episode. And until then, know that empowered you empowers others. Love, abundance, and prosperity to you all.